Which is better in extreme weather? Polite harness or brigandine? Hi folks, Matt Easton here, Scholar Gladiatoria. Now, this question is very much inspired by the fact that I'm going to be at Tewkesbury uh, Battle Reenactment, Tewkesbury Medieval Festival this weekend. And the forecast is interesting. <laughs> so English weather, I guess, is uh, pretty much famous worldwide. I famous notorious rather than famous. Um, but um, uh, fundamentally what we're facing is it being warm and wet. <laughs> I don't mind the warm, at least it's, if it's not too extreme warm. I don't usually mind the wet, except for when I'm in armour. And this has caused me a real, real dilemma. Now, we're going to be looking here at brigandine versus plate, but I might also mention mail as well. This is my new, very nice mail voiders. Um, the voiders themselves made by Nick Chexfield and um, Rob Chave made the, um, the, the, the garment part that joins the two voiders. Right. So, um, fundamentally, I'm faced with, with a question here of um, we're going to look at heat cold and wet. Uh, so first of all, in terms of heat, so observation over the last few years, I'll try and keep this as concise as possible, is that plate armour, contrary to lots of people's perception, plate armour actually seems to be better in the heat than brigandine does. And there's a simple fact for that, okay? So if we look at a plate harness, you're wearing, assume you're wearing the same thing underneath, okay? So you're wearing a relatively thin arming doublet. Plate harness is one sheet of steel. Yes, it absorbs heat. Yes, it radiates or emits heat, but it's one layer, fundamentally. The problem with a brigandine is you have just as much steel, and you could say even more steel because it's got overlapping plates on the inside, so brigandines aren't light and some brigandines are as heavy as a cuirass but you've got fabric or sometimes leather over the top and sometimes layers i mean this has got two layers this has got a sort of canvas layer and a woolen cloth layer so fundamentally and also notice it's colored as well so it's not going to radiate heat as well it's going to insulate more and potentially it might absorb heat as well. My armour is blackened, so it does absorb, uh, theoretically anyway, it absorbs um, more of the sun's rays, whereas a polished, um, you know, silver-coloured, steel-coloured harness, or even a gilt ha um, harness, should, should somehow reflect some of the heat. So, some people might disagree with this, but overall, surface area for surface area, if we're just talking about the, the torso, for example, a plate, a breastplate, should be cooler than a brigandine. Now, there's a couple of modifying factors to that and caveats to add. First of all, there are gaps between the plates on a brigandine, if we look inside it there. So you can see there's loads of gaps inside. So theoretically, heat can get out there. Um, however, the plates are very close to each other and they're overlapping, so eh, not so convinced about that. The main difference, and I think the public, the, the common perception, is that somebody who's wearing a breastplate or a cuirass, breast and back with a fold, is more likely to be fully encased. And a fully encased person is going to absorb uh, more heat. Um, and, but um, it's going to be more insulated because they've got, they're fully encased and the moisture and stuff can't evaporate out uh, and the normal sweating pro process is impeded. However, someone with a brigandine is more likely to have exposed arms and legs and by virtue of that might be cooler. However, just their torso, I think the brigandine is hotter than the plate harness. So, yes indeed, if you're partially armoured, you're going to be cooler. If you've got an open face, open, you know, just cloth coloured arms and legs you're gonna emit heat more easily you're gonna be cooler however if you're fully encased so if you've got plate arms and legs and a brigandine I think you'll be hotter than if you just have a full plate harness with a plate cuirass. Now we can deal with cold weather fairly quickly because it's the same kind of in reverse a brigandine for the most part is going to be warmer than a plate harness. Um, the plate harness emits heat. If you're not absorbing any heat from the sun, all it does is sap your heat inside your body and radiate it out. So you're going to get very cold in a plate harness and wet and sweaty, sweaty and wet and cold, it's horrible, in winter, whereas a brigandine is more likely to actually keep you warm. Now I did say that I would mention mail briefly and remember that mail is worn with either of these things. So it's actually relevant to both and of course it's relevant to earlier periods before 
before the plate cuirass or before the brigandine existed. So for centuries and centuries, all the back to the Roman period, early Roman period, male Lorica hamata was worn. And indeed, it was still being worn by itself all the way through until the 12th century. In the 13th century, we start to get the coat of plates and individual plates on uh, some, sometimes on knees and elbows, things like that. In the 14th century, we get the beginning of the plate harness. And then in the 15th, well, by the middle of the 14th century, we've got full plate harness. And by the 15th century, we've got full plate harness and it goes on. But during this whole period, male is still being worn. In the 15th and 16th century, some people just wore entire male shirts, but even fully the armoured knights, obviously their armpits, their crotches, their, all of the bits you can't stick plates, are still got mail in them. This is why I've got voiders here that cover my upper arms and armpits because they're the exposed areas in my harness. And equally, someone who was wearing a brigandine would generally wear it with a male shirt or sometimes with male voiders as well. So during this whole period, mail would be used. Now, mail in terms of heat, we touched on this in a recent video and I saw that Shad did a nice reply as well. Fundamentally, mail is one of the coolest and most forgiving types of armour you can wear because it's full of holes. It's literally made of holes. So um, everything goes in, everything goes out just like an item of clothing. Um, so really, wearing mail by itself neither makes you hotter nor cooler you could possibly say it radiates because it conducts heat slightly better than wool, for example, but you can wear things over it. I would say it doesn't markedly, compared to brigandine or plate, it doesn't really make you particularly hotter or cooler. It's almost irrelevant as far as the heat is concerned. Now let's come finally to that very particular British issue the rain um, and the issue that I'm concerned about for this weekend because we although it's going to be warm there is forecast rain and I literally have the choice to wear my harness with a, the cuirass this is just the upper breastplate incidentally it has a lower placard and fold um, or to wear my brigandine um, now in terms of mobility and protection and all of those things that's a kind of different issue frankly both of them will protect me enough for the purposes of this uh, both of them are pretty mobile. I'm perhaps slightly more agile in my brigandine and it's easier to put on because I can put it on myself, it joins up the front. That's a very, very important fact. A man-at-arms or knight in full plate harness requires another person to help in getting it on. If I'm putting my, I can put my legs on myself, if I'm putting my arm armour on, I do need someone else to help me, but the brigandine itself, I can put on and take off myself in seconds. Super convenient. So for common soldiers, brigandine is an absolutely practical and fantastic armour. It doesn't give as much protection as a plate cuirass in terms of being hit by arrows or a lance on horseback or being someone hitting you with a halberd or something like this. It's not going to offer as much protection as a plate cuirass, but you get some benefits, ease of wear, comfort, mobility, this kind of stuff. Okay, but the rain, which is better in the rain? Before I answer the question, why don't you quickly type your answer below? Which one would you wear if you knew that you were going to have to go out on Tewkesbury Battlefield this weekend and get rained on for a couple of hours in your armour. Think about all of the things here. Think about uh, putting it on in the rain. Think about functioning in the rain. And then think about taking it off and maintenance after being rained on. So, I'll tell you my conclusion and it might surprise some of you. What was yours? My conclusion is plate harness, okay? And this is my reasoning, okay? Fundamentally, there are less elements in a plate harness. Essentially, it's plates and some leather straps, and that's it. The problem with the brigandine is that not only have you got lots and lots of plates for moisture to get in between, but you've got a fabric covering. How the hell do you dry this thing? Fine if you can come back to your house or to a hotel room and stick it on a radiator or put it in a really hot, you know, like an airing cupboard or something. But if you're camping in a field, um, and you don't have access to your car's um, air conditioning or anything like that, how the hell do you dry it out? It's just going to sit there and fester. For this reason, um, the best quality modern replica brigandines now have, and a lot of the originals had, tinned plates. That is, each individual plate inside the brigandine here is covered in tin dipped in liquid tin so it's essentially it's like galvanized steel at that point okay it's covered in case steel so it can't rust why did they go to this enormous effort to do this because of this exact problem now the problem with my brigandine is it's not tinned now 
In fact, there's a fair amount of evidence to suggest a lot of the originals weren't tinned, but the best quality ones were tinned. And some people might argue they were all tinned, I don't know. But the fact is with tinned plates you've got nothing to worry about, you just wait for the fabric to dry out and the, t the plates will be more or less fine. The rivets are sometimes made of brass or cop copper alloy, or they themselves are also tinned. My rivets are plain steel, my plates are hardened carbon steel, unplated. They are blacked, um, they are oil quenched, so they shouldn't rust too easily, but my rivets will rust to hell. In fact, I've got a little bit of rust on some of these rivets. So, with my particular brigandine, I don't want to wear that in the rain, okay, for all of the reasons I've just explained. Whereas my cuirass, I can take a thing of oil and some towels, I can dry it off fairly quickly. There's nothing really to absorb moisture except for the leather straps, and that is worth mentioning because this will soak up, these leather straps will soak up water, and where they rest against the steel, they may cause rust. Now I've got some advantage because my armour is also blacked, a bit like my plates and my brigandine, so it is a little bit resistant, a bit like a gun barrel, it's resistant to some degree to rust. It actually doesn't rust very easily at all, um, although I have had a few small spots on it, so it can happen, but it's certainly rust retardant, if not completely rust resistant. So there we go, um, that may surprise some of you, I don't know, but for me personally with untinned brigandine, uh, and even frankly, even if there's another big problem here, even if these were tin plates, you get rained on, this already heavy garment will probably roughly double in weight, at least 50% increase in weight once it's full of water. The rain will just run off my cuirass. Now, how did they protect, apart from tinning plates, how did they protect steel in period? Well, there are mentions of olive oil and it's highly likely that they used wax as well. So in theory, I could actually cover a lot of my armour in Renaissance wax or beeswax or, or oil, um, and that will make it to some degree water resistant or repellent to some degree. Finally, I want to mention mail. Mail and rain are a horrible, horrible mixture. And the fact is we, we know that mail rusted. There's, there's, well, there's modern evidence of it. We see it with our own eyes, but we also know from sources that rusting mail was an issue. But also they had a very good way of cleaning rust off mail, which was to put it in a barrel and roll it because mail cleans itself. The amazing thing is a bit like a scouring pad that you might clean your, your saucepan with. It cleans itself, so by rolling it around, and some people might say that you put it in the barrel with sand or an abrasive as well, but I think just by itself it'd work. By rolling it around, it does clean itself. So mail will rust incredibly easily, but it's also relatively easy to de-rust it, at least with servants. And that's the point I want to finish on. In a medieval context, rather than a modern reenactment or HEMA context, in a medieval context, the answer is always, servants <laughs> and whatever issues you have with maintenance of your armor whether it's plate brigandine mail whatever you just pay someone to clean it okay if it gets rusty you give it to your servants and they sort it out and even someone wearing a brigandine so someone you know an english archer on sixpence a day for example even they could probably afford to pay someone to clean their armor up if, if it was needed so Thanks a lot for watching. I hope that's been interesting. Um, I'll be interested to see your posts and your comments below, and I hope I'll see you back really soon. Cheers, folks. Thanks for watching. We've got extra videos on Patreon. Please give our Facebook a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Cheers, folks.